Backing up your computer is one of the most important things you can do, and I've talked about this on the channel many times, and I keep preaching about it because if you were to lose data and you didn't have a backup, you'd be in a very tight spot. Chances are you're never going to get that data back, and that can be devastating for any number of reasons, whether you're losing pictures or tax documents or whatever. Losing data is horrible. So please, please have a backup. But the question is, how do you back up? So a few weeks ago, I made a video talking about 10 tips or tricks on how to back up your system. And one of those tips or tricks was a program called rsync. Now, rsync is a command line program that basically allows you to copy files and directories from one place to another. That's basically what rsync does. At the basis level, that's all it does. And it really doesn't matter where those files are. So you can use things like SMB or SSH if you wanted to, to transfer your backups over SSH to another computer or to a NAS or whatever. You could do that with rsync very easily. So what I thought I would do today is take you through the very basics of rsync. And when I say the very basics, I really do mean the very basics. I'm going to take you through four flags that you need to know or four options that you need to know to use rsync. And that's going to be like the just scratching the surface. Because if you were to look at the manual page for rsync, you'd find that it has approximately 100 different options that you could use. And I'm probably underestimating that just a little bit. There are a ton of options. There's no way we could cover them all in this video without being here for several days. So we're not going to do that. I'm going to show you the four most important ones. And I'll point you to the man page if you want to know more. So... Let's go ahead and jump in. I'm going to show you the basics of how to use rsync. So the first thing that we should talk about is installation. If you are using Linux, chances are rsync is already installed on your system. Most distros have rsync pre-installed. If it does not, it should be in your distro's repositories. I can't think of a single distribution out there that doesn't have rsync in it. So if you can't find it on your system, download it through your package manager. It'll be very simple to do. Once you have it installed, then you have to get to actually using it. So let me show you what rsync actually looks like. So at its basis, rsync, which is just done with the rsync command, simply copies directories from directory one to directory two. Now, like I said, these can be in any place you want. So it can be an SMB server somewhere else. It can be your SMB on your computer. It can be an SSH somewhere else, whatever. It can be on your system. It can be an external hard drive. It doesn't really matter. If you want to learn how to do the SSH and the SMB stuff, all that stuff is covered in the man page. But at its basest form, what rsync does is it copies files and directories from one directory to another. If you run this and those directories actually existed, then you'd be set to go. But obviously, if that was all there was to it, this wouldn't be much of a tutorial. That's very simple and much too simple. So let's make this a little bit more complicated. So there are four flags, as I said, that you'll want to know to use when you use rsync. So the first one is the dash a option. Now, this is the easiest one to explain. Basically, what the dash a option does is it preserves all the permissions of the files and directories that you're copying. So things like the ownership, the read write executable permissions for each file that way if you were to have to restore your data back onto a linux machine or any other machine those permissions would still be there as they were when you copied them if you were to not use the dash a flag you would find yourself probably in a world of hurt when you tried to restore that data simply because it would probably not preserve the appropriate permissions. The permissions would probably take the form of whatever drive you were copying it to. So if you were to transfer it to an NTFS drive, the permissions for NTFS are really kind of weird. So if you were to transfer your data there without preserving the permissions, when you transfer the files and stuff back, those permissions and the ownership and stuff would be completely different. So use the dash A option. The next flag or the next option that you want to use is the V flag. Basically what the V flag does is it allows you to see a verbose output of the rsync command as it runs. So what this allows you to do is see exactly what rsync is doing and if there are any errors along the way. So if there are folders or files that were deleted while rsync was running, it will show you an error. Or if it was unable to copy your files or folders from one place to another, it will tell you exactly why it couldn't do that. So with the V flag, you'll be able to see that information without the V flag, that information would not be there. It just would run and then tell you it was completed. 
The next one that is important is the dash dash delete option. Now, this is the option that I've had the hardest time in this video explaining. I've tried to do this now five times, and every time I try to explain what the dash dash delete option is, I've pretty much failed. I've made it much too complicated, and really, it's very simple. So, if we have this here, basically what the dash dash delete option does is that it syncs those two directories up. And if you've ever heard the term delta update or delta backup, basically that's what the dash dash delete option does. Why this is important is because let's just say you have been using your computer for a long time and you've made many, many backups. So I'm going to actually show you my backups. If I do an LS here, you'll see that I have many, many backups. And each one of these has a lot of folders and directories in them. And most of them are almost precisely exactly the same. You know, there's only going to be some small changes between the one that was done on July 14th and the one that was also done on July 14th. Why I did those exactly the same day, I'm not sure. Usually I don't do two backups in a day, but apparently that one that I did. So in this case, it's actually a, a very good reason why I should use the dash dash delete option. I don't use it, obviously. I prefer to have separate backups of everything every time I run rsync. But for most people, that's not going to be feasible because this takes up a lot of space. By using the dash dash delete option, basically what's happening there is that it's going to compare directory 1 and directory 2. So directory 2 in this case, in this situation, already exists. So you've ran rsync one time and now you're running it a second time or a third time or whatever. And you're running it with the same command with the same directory and path structure. Basically what the dash dash delete option is going to do is co compare directory 1 to directory 2 and then make the changes in directory 2 so that it's precisely exactly the same as directory 1, but without transferring everything over. So for example, my music collection. My music collection is about 100 gigabytes worth of music. If I were to have my music collection in directory 1 and also in directory 2, what dash dash delete would do is compare the music directory in dir1 and dir2 and then just transfer over the changes between them. So let's just say since the last time I've ran rsync, I've downloaded 10 new songs. Instead of transferring over the entire music directory into directory 2 again, basically what it's going to do is just transfer over those 10 new songs. That's what it does. So it will also, if I've deleted things from directory 1, so I've deleted 10 songs from my music directory, it will just delete those 10 songs from directory 2. That's what the dash dash delete option does. Not as hard as it sounds or as complicated as it sounds, but that's what it does. And it's a very good solution if you're only ever going to use one directory as your backup location. It's so your backup location doesn't balloon in size with a whole bunch of different versions of files. Okay, so those are the three most important flags that you'll want to use. If you were to just do this, you'd be well on your way and you could just use that. Now, there is one extra one that I wanted to talk about. So, if I were to show you my rsync script, there is this flag here called dash dash exclude. Now, this is not as big of a deal if you use the dash dash delete option, but if you don't, the dash dash exclude option basically just tells rsync, do not sync this particular path. So don't don't back up my music, don't back up my ISOs, don't back up that local dash share. That's where Steam stores the games. Don't back up dot cache, don't back up dot var, and so on and so forth. Now there is a way to combine those so that you only have to use dash dash exclude once. I just haven't got around to doing it yet. But that's what the dash dash exclude option does. So if if you're going to be like me and have a whole bunch of directories with your backups in it, sorted by date, whatever you're not going to want a whole bunch of copies of your music collection. It's unnecessary. Have a couple. You don't need 50 of them. Okay, you just don't. Uh, same thing with your ISOs. You don't need to back up those at all. At least I don't think I need to. So I don't want those things to take up a whole bunch of space. So I just exclude them from my rsync script. So the dash dash exclude option is a really nice one if you have large files that you don't want transferred over in your rsync script. So that is the fourth flag that I consider most important. Now, that's just really scratching the surface of rsync. If we were to go into the man page for rsync and scroll down to the options section, there are approximately 6,000 lines, maybe even a little bit more. 
in this man page. So if you're into some good reading, read the man page. Uh, there's a lot of stuff here, a lot of interesting stuff too. I don't want to scare you away by saying it's 6,000 lines, but there's just a lot of stuff. But the the most important part of the man page is going to be the option summary. And as you can see, if we were to scroll down here, there are a ton of options that you can choose from. Some of this stuff is going to be so you can like change the owner of the group, change or preserve the device files and things like that, copy the device contents, preserve the access times and stuff like that. So there's just a ton of stuff here that you can do. Most of the stuff here, you're never going to ever use, but there are a few that are really interesting things to point out. So things like the, the delete before and the delete after, those, that allows you to basically control what that dash dash delete flag compares when it comes to like the time of the file and the time of creations, things like that. The dash dash delete excluded would also delete excluded files from the destination directory. So if you were to have been using rsync for quite some time, but then discovered the dash dash exclude flag, you could then run dash dash delete excluded and it would delete the excluded files that you just created from your backup location. So that's one other option. There are uh, maximum sized uh, flags if you wanted to only back up certain size of files, things like that. And it just goes on and on and on and on and on. So there is a ton of stuff here when it comes to rsync that you can do. And I highly recommend at least perusing the man page because there's a ton of stuff here that I haven't com you know commented on or explained whatsoever. In fact, the vast majority of this stuff I've never used. And I think that that's going to be the case for the vast majority of people. The four that I've covered are going to be the four ones that most people use. You may end up finding a few others that you want to kind of throw in there if you have other needs. But those four that I talked about are the main four that most people probably use. So that is rsync at its basic, basic form. So what does this actually look like running? Let me show you. So if I were to run my rsync script, I've already showed you what that is. And let me show you, let me show it to you again. This is my, what my rsync does. It basically just declares the date, gives the backup directory. Ignore this one for now. Uh, that that had never actually gotten to work. Uh, and then it makes the directory, which is basically the backup directory that I'm going to be using. So it creates it on my external hard drive with the file name of the date of the backup. And then it just runs rsync, runs rsync dash av. So it's going to use the archive and the verbose mode. And then it, had, it excludes several files. It's going to back up my home directory and then it's going to back it up into this place right here using those variables. So that's what my rsync script does. If you want to use my rsync script, you can, it's up on GitLab. Just make sure you get the paths right because obviously your paths are going to be different. So I'm going to run rsync.sh if I can spell, which I can't. Wow. Whew. Been a long day. All right. I'm going to run this and it's that's what rsync looks like with the verbose flag. Without the verbose flag, you wouldn't see any of this stuff. So basically all this is do doing is it's running rsync. It's transferring this each file here that it's showing into the appropriate file in the, the destination directory. And once it's done, it moves on to the next one and over and over and over again until it's all the way done. So that is what rsync looks like when it's done. It, in my case, it usually takes around four or five minutes. And obviously the more stuff you're transferring from directory one to directory two, the longer it's gonna take. Obviously it's not so much the number of files, but the size of files. The bigger the file, longer it's gonna take to transfer. So that's what rsync looks like running and as you can see here, it's gotten to a file where it's taking a little while. So that's probably one uh, file that I could exclude if I wanted to. I mean, doing that because I don't really need a, a cache. But anyways, that's what rsync looks like. As I said, this is a very, very brief overview of how to use rsync. As you saw in the man page, there's a ton of stuff there that I could have talked about. And we could have been here for a very long time when it comes to actually showing you some of those flags. And... I wouldn't have been a very good person to go over a lot of that stuff because I've never used a lot of that stuff. Most of the stuff is just things that I wouldn't need. The script that I have works perfectly fine for me. I should use the dash dash delete option, but I just don't. If you have comments about rsync or any of this stuff, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. If you have questions, I'll try to answer them in the comment section below. You can follow me on Twitter at the Linux cast. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can 
You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast, just like all these fine people. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very much for your support. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.